my name is Paul. This is my kitchen. Today's little victory. Again, a bigger victory. Actually, this is a much bigger victory because it's a more complex recipe. I feel like since Thanksgiving is coming up uh, in a week, and it's going to be one of those, it's going to be not one of those, it's going to be a strange Thanksgiving. We might be just eating alone or with some a, a few close friends, a few close family members. So I figured we well, might as well make something that's kind of special and an all-in-one celebratory dish. Um, and so this is going to be a squash, a stuffed squash with rice, apple, onion, and mushroom. One of the things about this though that's really special actually is something called forbidden rice. And forbidden rice or black rice or emperor's rice is actually quite special. So I've, I've been soaking this rice uh, since this morning, so it's been like five or six hours. You can just soak it for like 20, 30 minutes, but I just want to tell you why this rice is particularly special. And, ta-da, I have my little board here. All right, here it is, forbidden rice. This is awesome stuff that I have fairly recently discovered. Um, I've had, in Thailand, occasion will have black rice. Check this out. First of all, it's purple slash black, which you might say, okay, obviously it's purple black, big deal. One of the reasons that we want to eat different colored foods is because those different colors are different flavonoids, different uh, chemicals in the body that have different properties, okay? And this one, the black uh, color, is called anthocyanin, anthocyanin, <clears throat> which is an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It's found in blueberries, blackberries, uh, black raspberries, even uh, purple cabbage. But there is more anthocyanin in forbidden rice than there is in any of these other, other foods. It's like the highest. It's really amazing. In addition, this has a third less carbs than white rice, twice the protein. Um, and then compared to blueberries, more fiber, more iron, more antioxidants, less carbs. So it's like, it's a superfood for sure. It's got a great like nutty, lovely flavor. And so we're gonna use this kind of rice. Now, can you use white rice, white rice, brown rice? Up to you. But I'm showing this one because it's kind of fun. I'm gonna cut these acorn squash and chop them in half, de-seed them, throw a little oil and salt on there, throw them in the oven at 400, 400 degrees, and just let them sit there, let them cook for a while. So you just gotta get that point in there. And then once you got that, then you can just work it around. Come on. Okay, now I just uh, scoop it out, scoop out the seeds, which you can actually, if you don't throw these away, you can put these in the oven, clean these up, put them in the oven, add a little salt, and you got yourself a nice little tasty pumpkin seed snack. All right, now I'm gonna use a little avocado oil to uh, brush on the top and inside. Remember, you want to use a high heat oil because we're baking this at 400 degrees, and they're gonna they're gonna sit for a while. Add a little salt to it. Season as you go, and then I'm gonna just throw face down onto this tray. You can use any kind of baking tray; it does not matter. And then we're just throwing in the oven this way, boom, just like that, 400 degrees. Let that cook for maybe 40 minutes, something like that, 30, 40 minutes. So this is kind of a three-part process. Number one is the, is the squash in the oven. I'm pointing towards the oven. You have to trust me on this one. Squash in the oven, making rice, and then cooking up the mushroom, onion, apple mixture. So that's kind of the four parts. And then we just throw it all together, add some Parmesan cheese on top at the end, and we got ourselves a beautiful meal. All right, next. 
the rice. Now we're going to cook the rice. Um, I'm not going to cook it in the rice cooker. I haven't tried cooking it in the rice cooker yet. I'm not sure if it would work. This rice is not like a typical two to one ratio of a normal rice. It's more like a four to one. Um, so I'm just going to uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to rinse it out because it's been soaking for a while, and then I'm going to add it to a pot, and we're going to go from that. This pot is not going to be big enough. So I'm going to use this uh, Dutch oven that I have here, which I'm one of my favorite toys in the kitchen, uh, and I'm going to use that for the rice. Okay. So first thing I need to rinse the rice. I am rinsing the rice. All right. Even though I tell you guys sometimes not to use a measuring cup, when it comes to rice, eh, it's a good thing. Four to one. A little salt in there too. And now we're just gonna throw it on the stove. Typical rice, bring it up to a boil. Once it's boiling, bring it down to low, kind of like a low medium. And let it cook. It, cooks a, it, takes, it takes a little bit longer than a normal, um, here. You can see my stove, for God's sake. There it is. This takes a little bit longer than a typical rice. You know, rice might be like just 15, 20 minutes. This might be like a little bit longer, 30 minutes or so. So here we go. Burner's on full blast. We're gonna let it boil. Once it boils, we'll bring down the heat. You know that. While the squash is baking, while the rice is cooking, we're gonna prep the onions and the mushrooms That's just how it goes. All right, I'm gonna start cooking down the onions right now. I happen to have this really lovely pot that my neighbor gave to me recently. Look at this thing. Ah, I'm crying. Tears of joy, people, tears of joy. The hand. I'm washing mushrooms. I'm washing mushrooms. Next week, we're gonna talk about mushrooms. Because mushrooms rock. Okay. Apple. I got a Granny Smith. I like Granny Smiths. They're a little less sugary, so they're good to cook with. Apples. I'm going to do that. Probably shouldn't look, but I'm gonna do it really quick. Oh yeah, totally boiling. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of balsamic vinegar in there, just for fun. Just a little bit. You can see to my low, my uh, whew, you can smell that balsamic, it's good. If I had some red wine, I'd probably throw some red wine in there. But I drank it all. Mushroom, let them soak in some water, like this. See, they're swimming. Do do do, mushroom swimming in the water. Eee. Oh, I did learn a technique the other day. Let's see if this works. Where you line up all the mushrooms together. Actually, I'll put all the bellas together. There's a special way that I cook mushrooms. So what I do, and I got this, I think a long time ago from the American Test Kitchen, America's Test Kitchen, where they like take all these different ways of doing things and they'll try to find out what's the best. And the way that they seemed to figure out was the best for mushrooms was to cook them in water first. Instead of cooking them in oil first, cook them in water first, cook it all the way down, then add the oil once they're all like all their pores are all open because they tend to resist the oil, of course, at first. It takes time for them to kind of like open up and allow something in, you know? They're, they're kind of like people. I'm putting water in the mushrooms. All right, here we go. All right, I'm just gonna let them cook down. Heat turned up nice and high. I'm gonna cook these mushrooms down, let that water 
open up the pores of the mushrooms, not the spores of the mushrooms, the pores of the mushrooms, and then uh, then we're gonna put some butter in there to make them nice and yummy and umami. Umami, umami. Got that ready, got that going, got the rice going. I think we're good. All we gotta do is combine it all together. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. So how do you know when the squash is done? Hmm? If you stick a fork in it and it goes all the way through, it's done. That's how you know when your squash is done. Quite easy. And here, smelling so good. I'm gonna add some butter now. So basically, a couple tablespoons. That's kind of like about two tablespoons. But you can put more butter, you can put less butter. I'm an advocate of more. That's just how I roll. Now it's salt, unsalted butter because then I, I can control the salt. But you can use salted butter too, that's fine. So now I'm just gonna combine everything. So the, the squash is almost done. I got my mushrooms here, I got my onions and apples here, I've got my rice there. And I'm just gonna put it all together. So move all this crap out of the way. I'm gonna use this little bowl to combine things. Use a slotted spoon so I don't pick up too much liquid. Just throw a little bit of onion and apple in there. And throw some shrimpanunas in there. And the black rice. Woo. Look at that. Chock full of nutritional goodness. Boom. How about a couple? Boom. See, look at this. Woo, just right through. Right through, like no resistance. Wait, there's resistance on this one. Nope, no resistance. No resistance. Oh, definitely. Oh, perfect. Now flip them over. This could be just your meal. You could just make the squash, throw a little butter in there if you want to sweeten it up with some brown sugar, some cinnamon, if you really want to be decadent. And uh, that could be enough. Oh yeah. Mm. That's so good. Right. A little parmesan. And I'm just gonna. So if you're not a dairy person, what's your problem? Just kidding. I eat almost no dairy actually. This is actually quite a splurge for me. But if you're gonna eat dairy, uh, parmesan cheese is a good way to go. Hard cheeses are good. They don't. They probably won't upset your belly. But if you have like a lactose intolerance, obviously you wouldn't take it. I'm gonna throw these back in the oven for just a few minutes, just to get them uh, melty on the top. Throw it in the oven there. <laughs> Let it sit there for five minutes tops. So thank you for all sticking with me on this journey of stuffed squash. Make it however you want. Make it, make it your own. You don't have to do what I did. Um, I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. Hope you, whether you're alone, whether you're with one other person or two other people, whether, whatever, whatever you do, you know, make the most of it. And um, remember next year, we're gonna just have a big party celebration at my place, okay? I'm putting that out there right now. I'm gonna cook for everybody. Everybody that's watching this, come on over. We're gonna we're gonna party like it's 2021. Uh, I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.